perfect. All right, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Jane Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Restucia, Vice President of Water Management Solutions today, and I'm really excited to be talking to the people I'm going to be talking to today because uh, what we have are some people that are day in, day out working uh, water management for agriculture in California. And that is such a big topic right now uh, for several reasons, right? Uh, water management is becoming more and more important every day. Agriculture in California isn't just important to California, but to the whole country because so much uh, uh, fruits and vegetables are produced in California and shipped all over the country, all over the world for that matter. And then, uh, and then finally, uh, this drought thing is uh, so important. So uh, what's really key today is we've got uh, Jeff Klein. He's the managing partner for Jack Klein Farms with us. He's got his hand in managing 20,000 acres of farmland in California. Um, if I, I can't even imagine what a task that must be, uh, but we're gonna get to talk to him today and uh, learn about water management from his perspective and what he's doing. If you ask me, uh, you don't get this opportunity very often to speak to somebody who's actually living it day in and day out and has been for, uh, for his whole life and uh, for four, you know, three generations before him. Um, also joining us today is uh, Jeff Toole. He's the Executive Vice President for Jane Distribution Holdings. He is the, uh, he is the thought leader for our technology at uh, Jane Irrigation right now. He uh, is very active in uh, water management uh, services, a new service uh, from Jane this year, where we're actually providing water management services to growers in California. And then we also have Stephen Sorius, who you've seen before on here as well. And uh, Stephen's actually the, uh, the manager, the water manager that's working directly with Jeff Klein. So we thought it would be interesting to have Stephen on here as well uh, as we learn about water management services, uh, as we learn how Jane provides information to Jeff Klein and more importantly, how he uses that information to, uh, to be a better grower. So uh, anyway, welcome gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah, so, thanks for having us. Yep. Yeah. So Jeff Klein, we were talking before we got started uh, just about the heat and a little bit about the drought in California. And uh, gosh, I know everybody is concerned about this. You can't go on uh, any uh, news organization that isn't talking about it. Uh, from your perspective, somebody who's dealing with it every day, uh, what's it like out there right now? It's uh, it's hot. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, water is very crucial at this moment. It's uh, 110 degrees here today, and we got two more days in the mid hundreds, um, followed by a little bit of cool down. But uh, with water restrictions being put, we farm in the Stockton and Tracy Delta. And we're fortunate enough to have riparian rights and pre-1914 rights, but given the conditions of the reservoirs and the river levels, uh, we're still treating this as if our water could be cut off at any moment. So we've really tried to get on wet, tried to get uh, to maintain our deep moisture, um, knowing that we're going into the harvest season. Um, but as of now, I think you know we've, we're, we're looking okay, uh, better than than a lot of the state, but we're, uh, we're not going to be exempt from issues as well. Huh. So Jeff, I know you guys farm uh, grapes, you guys farm almonds, you farm uh, sweet corn, uh, asparagus, you've got your hand in a lot of different crops. Um, is this heat, is this drought going to affect quality mm -hmm. and, and for you guys or anybody else? How, how, does, how does that work? You know, as far as the nut crop, I think the nut crop's going to be okay, uh, just given the fact that it has progressed so quickly. Uh, we're going through some some real hot weather right now, but these nuts are, are, are pretty hard. You open them up, and it's uh, they're starting to harden off. Size has been made at this point. Uh, what's what's really going to, you know, kind of, time will tell what's going to happen with next year's crop. Because this crop is made, but next year's crop will start will begin after this harvest, and I think a lot of people are gonna are gonna have to really limit water or almost cut water, um, and and I think next year's almond crop could be you know you could see the effects of this year's drought. Uh, as far as from a row crop standpoint, yes, the the drought effects are going to be immediate. 
Um, I think you'll see smaller size in, in, in your fruit all across the board, just as a lot of size is accomplished through water. Um, a lot of a lot of what we grow is is water weight, and uh, if if you are if you are on water, you're gonna you're gonna lack in size and you're gonna lack in sugar as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's interesting. Well, we feel the effects, and when I say we, I mean the consumers. <laughs> Will we feel the effects in prices? Will this help prices at all? Will this drive prices higher? I don't believe so. There's not much in this world that drives the farmers' prices higher. Um, so, I mean, I know for, from our standpoint, uh, given the markets, it's surprising how cheap these markets are right now, given the, given the condition of the state and, and the water. Um, you know, potatoes are extremely cheap. Corn is cheap at the moment. Um, melons are cheap. It's uh, the only thing that's, that's decent at the moment would be a you know, your field corn, your grain corn, those have seen uh, run up in prices, but that's just inflationary. Um, I, I think I don't think the consumer will see any effect at the grocery store other than if the grocery store wants to take a price increase because they can't. Yeah. Wow, I'm, that really makes it tough on you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, always uh, sorry to hear that. So, um, so Jeff, now you, uh, you were one of the first uh, people to sign up for the water management services from Jane. And uh, I just wanted to start out with, you know, uh, has it helped you? How do you use it? You know, how, how does this work for you? Yeah, it's, it's helped me tremendously. I signed up this year. Um, I, I got an email that, that, uh, that said that Jane was looking for 10 growers. And I said, I, you know, I, I want, I want in on this as, I know there's always more to learn about water management. Uh, I have three other water providers or, or water services that I use, and they, you know, they they're, they work, but the I, they don't work to the full to the extent they should because we just never taught how to use them. We had the probes installed in the field, and then it was it was see you later. Whereas this with Jane has been more has been a partnership where walking me through the software, how to, you know, different, different tools that the software provides to see the water, to see the water go through the soil, how it's moving there, aerial images, vigor, and as well as forecasting, uh, forecasting schedules. Um, it, it's been really nice to see, um, it, it's been really nice to see my penetration as well. And I'm, and I'm learning here, through this software that I think, I think water can be actually saved, saved through this is if you're applying it properly. We learned a lot about durations and frequencies, uh, which, which I've, which I've had software, would, which would be capable of doing similar things, but just never explained to me and never, never done in the manner which you guys have, have created this platform. Yeah, thank you. That's interesting, right? Because one of the things I like about it is uh, with the water management service, you actually get a coach or somebody to help you understand, right? You're working side by side with Steven. And, uh, you know, certainly anytime I tried a, a new sport, if I had a coach to help me through versus one me trying to figure it out myself, it's always easier to figure it out with a coach. So uh, uh, I, I really like that you said that. Now, uh, from, from, from your perspective, though, how, you know, uh, how easy was this to get started? Did you have to buy a lot of equipment? Did you have to install stuff? How, how did all that work? No, so uh, I signed up for the program. Um, it was, uh, it's a per acre fee and it, uh, all the, the equipment was installed in my field. And then once installed, uh, they started walking me through what readings I can gather from this data. And in, in conjunction, we figured out uh, what, what depths we should be reading what depths we should be accumulating to get the best reading for, you know, for an accurate soil, uh, you know, moisture level of the tree or whatever various crop you were growing. So it wasn't, it wasn't just the install. It's once you're installed, that's half the battle. Now you've got to learn how to set the parameters to make it, to make it work for what you're trying to do. And that's, that's where Stephen's been a huge help. Right. And I know, I mean, I know you're a, a smart guy, intelligent grower and, uh, you know, a good business person. Um, did you trust this right away or how, uh, how, how did you learn to trust it? No, uh, 
No way. <laughs> no, if I, I, like I said, I have three other ones I look at and, and I don't really trust any of them because what I do trust is walking out in the field and looking at it and digging and like, okay, this is, this is wet. This is not, I mean, that's pretty simple. The problem lies is when you're, and that's great. If you farm, you know, 20 acres, you go out there and do that. You can go do that every couple of days, throw a shovel on the ground and it works. But when you're trying to farm on a large scale, you don't have the ability to do that on a daily basis. And these decisions need to be made on a daily basis, especially, especially this year, because you can't get behind. You can't let these things dry down, no matter what crop it is, or you're going to have financial impacts. So by having this software, it's allowed me to, it's allowed me to look at more things to see the water move through the soil and to not actually you still physically go because, you know, obviously it, innately, you don't trust it. You, you, you know, I got to go out and look at this crop. I need to see what this looks like, not just look at my soil reading. You do this for a few months and you realize that, yeah, okay, this thing, this thing's got it. It's, 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 it's working. And you learn how those parameters work for you, what you're trying to accomplish with your soil type. And so uh, the, the software alone is great. But you need you need somebody that you can work work with because you need to adjust all these parameters within that software. And obviously, I, I'm a farmer. I don't know how to I don't know how to do this stuff. This is my third Zoom, so it's uh, well, I'm not not very computer computer savvy. Right, but you're learning, and I I can tell from our earlier conversation this week, you have a uh, level of uh, knowledge of the software that's uh, greater than most people I talk to. So uh, certainly you have picked well, it up, and uh, and and that's been great to hear and uh, and see about. So, uh, Stephen, um, you've obviously uh, won some trust from Jeff here, and uh, that isn't easy to do. You know how how, uh, how did you do that? You know, what, uh, what did you do to make that happen? Um, I think there's a couple factors. Uh, the first one is I'm, I'm completely honest with them um, about everything we do. If I'm really confident about something, I let them know. Um, if there's something that's kind of above my head or out of my wheelhouse, I'm very honest with them about that. Um, I, I, there's no BS with me. Um, and I, I think the, another one, probably the most important is that I, I'm here when he needs me, you know, uh, whenever he answers, whenever he calls me, I answer my phone. If there's an issue in the field that he wants to talk about, I'll be there the next day. Um, you know, even if he has a question that, that I don't know about, I, I've been in the industry for a long time. I've got a pretty good Rolodex. I could, um, I, fi I do my best to try and the, try to find the answers for him. Um, I think that's how we did it because that's that's how me and Jeff, when we first started talking about this service, that's what we wanted to do was not just be irrigation scheduling or sensor training, but to be a trusted advisor and um, to really uh, to help in any way possible. And I think the trust was built because Jeff and, and Parker um, saw that pretty early on. Yeah, I love that, Stephen, right? This is the concept of uh, give help, expect nothing in return, and uh, usually good things happen out of that, right? So yeah. uh, that's great to hear. Um, so Jeff Klein, um, you're saying you're trying some other services or you've tried some others. Uh, what's different about this service than the others? I think the, the biggest difference is, is how your um, how the Jane software is set up to where how you can see it all at one time, how it all correlates together. Um, a lot of what what is on there, if you're smart enough, you can piece it out of all the uh, you, other software. You can piece it out of it. You can get this data, but that's you know I don't lack I don't have the skill set, nor do I believe any farmer has a skill set to 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 get this data what you guys have done is put it on a platform where we can see it where we can you you've made it user friendly and it's uh, it's very easy to navigate uh, there's and then you figure out what what we call them widgets what widgets work best for you and you know you can kind of correlate your your home page or your own setting to the widgets that work for the area you're farming we farm, farm all over where some, some ground I have, um, 
it's gravel and water just goes straight through it. The other, other ground we farm, uh, the water tables at about two feet. And so it's, you need to, you need to be cautious of, uh, you need to know where you are and then set your, set your software accordingly. And that's, that's why I think without a partnership, this doesn't work. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, it's definitely working, right? It's a good partnership. And uh, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be on here today. So we very much appreciate that. And, and Stephen, from your perspective, what, what's working so well? Why, why is this working so well? Uh, I, I think it goes back to the trust. I mean, uh, we, we built that trust and, um, you know, Jeff trusted. I'm doing the best I can. My intentions are to help his overall farming uh, operations. Um, and, and also the fact that we we're working together, right? So, um, I don't tell him what to do. He doesn't tell me what he's doing. We get together as a team and, uh, we come up with a plan and, um, sometimes it's something that I strongly agree and he disagrees. And sometimes it's something that he strongly agrees and I disagree, but we come together as a team and, um, we work it out and it's been very beneficial. I mean, I think there's been some times where, there's been a phone call and, and we've said, well, that didn't work. Now let's do this. And um, I think, you know, with, we've been doing this for a couple months now and I think we've got it pretty dialed in. Um, and, and it's just because, just because we, we've become a team. I've, I've told them at the very beginning, listen, I work for you. Jane pays my paycheck though. So it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Well, I think you make a great point there, right? Because uh, partnerships, uh, have to be good, you know, whether things are going really well or if you're, there's a struggle. And believe me, this is business, farming, growing. There's always a struggle. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that, it's good to hear. Glad you're honest about that. I, I appreciate that. So, um, Jeff Klein, one thing that you were saying earlier this week was that, um, you know, you don't take what we say as gospel. You don't follow us you know, line for line, recommendation by recommendation. So you kind of walk us through how you interpret what we say and how you, you apply it for yourself and, 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 uh, and, and your, uh, yeah. Um, and just, yeah, I don't, I don't take what you guys say as gospel because I've, I've seen it. I've, I've done it a certain way for, for years. And it's really hard when you get comfortable and you see, you see that this works and it's like all of a sudden, you want to change this and you want to try to do something different. And sometimes you got to take a leap of faith and just try it. And what I've, what I've found is that, you know, these changes that we've made have actually been beneficial. You know, there, I, the computer is picking up things that I can't see with my bare eyes. So just, just for uh, almonds, as an example, we're probably 10 days away from hull split. And I've been, uh, through my last few irrigations, looking at the tree, I would assume that that the tree is happy, healthy, that you know it's growing actively, that uh, you know it's it's doing well, and and it is, it's doing well. But I know I have hull split in ten days, and so I need to get in there and spray, and then I need to get it wet again, and then dry it down for harvest. What I what I never knew was what was below that. That tree may look good but that's working off, off tap roots. When you go to dry this, these crops down to get in, then you're working on your, off your roots down deep. And, and with the software, I'm seeing how it infiltrates through the soil and where I'm wetting to the point where I think, oh, wow, you know, this is wet, this looks good. I got bright, bright red tips, growth tips, everything's great. Well, it is, it got down to 30 inches, but 48 is bone dry. And, I don't need that 48 right now, but in two weeks I do. So I believe that the overall crop health of this year's crop, plus what's going to, you know, what's to come for next will be that much better because now I can prepare for this. Now I can prepare for what I need to do. Um, and you, and we've, we've learned this by, by trying, we, you know, run, run longer durations, uh, long, you know, shorter frequency, We've tried all different things to, to watch this water move through the profile. And now I believe that, that we, have, we have some schedules set that, that really work well to get this water to move. And when it's not, we know why. 
And, and now I know how to properly irrigate these fields depending on where I want this water. I could argue that this would be a water savings tool if you, if you used it properly. As, as Stephen and I have learned that once I get this water down to 48 inches where I want it for these tree crops, what I didn't know prior to this was that in six days, that, that was dry, that was too dry. But if, you know, when I shut off for six days and then come back, which is what I would normally do because I just watered for a very long time. Well, then I come back six days later and I have to water again for a very long time as well, sometimes even longer to build up that top profile. And I still haven't made it down to where I need it from hole split. So I believe in do, running shorter shots, tighter frequency, I'm going to be able to accomplish what I want while actually having some water savings. Now, I need to get my water down there first, but uh, once earlier in the year, maybe three weeks ago, it was there and I was doing that. Um, I had to dry down to get in the spray for, for some mites in, in some fields. And when drying down, I let it go too long. And this is just, just, you know, in the short time period that we've learned. Yeah, that's so fascinating, right? Because um, uh, playing catch up <laughs> is nearly impossible when it's 107 degrees, right? Yeah. And, uh, and it's so cool yeah. that you can now yeah. say, I could see at 48 inches, it was, it was bone dry because a few years ago, you couldn't really say that, right? And, uh, or you might have a yeah. sense of yeah. it, you couldn't say with the exactness or the certainty that you can today. So uh, that, that, that's really yeah. neat. It's really nice that you're able to share that. And it makes it easier too, because like I said, with other softwares I've used, if I really got through, you know, got in there and, and, and dove into the software, I could find the answers. But if nobody's working with you, you don't trust, you just, you just feel like, oh, this has got, this can't be right. This has got to be an error. This can't be right. The trees look good. Right. But it, when you, when you formed a partnership and are working together, you have to, you, you learn to trust the people you're working with and it's, and you got to try these things. Well, I think that's the big difference. What a great observation too, right? That the trees don't reflect immediately what the water situation is. Yeah. There is a delay there. And by the time you see it, oftentimes it's too late. Yeah. And as any farmer knows, you're never working for today. You're working for a week from now because, yeah. you know, that's, you're try, always trying to look forward to what you need to do. Yeah. So Jeff Tool, you've got, uh, you've got the tough job of kind of overseeing all of this for Jane. Um, and uh, I, I know you're very active with a lot of growers, um, uh, but the growers that aren't using the services now or not using uh, Jane monitoring and control uh, products, what can they learn from Jeff Klein? You know, before I answer that question, I, I just, the whole dialogue here just got me, I don't know, so fired up and, and feeling very, very proud. Um, you know, there's a time when a lot of the companies, we can't have these kinds of conversations that we're having right now. We're not, we're not talking about the intricacies of a soil moisture probe or a pressure probe. We're not, we're not down into the, the, the noise level with that. We're talking about major impact and the application of the data that comes from those. So to me, it's just a whole nother level. And I think one of the things that uh, there's a couple of things that come to mind, but I think there's a couple of good takeaways. The first for me is that there are ag tech companies with technology and people that you can trust. You know, we've talked about trust this throughout this whole conversation. And that's, that's a, that's huge right now. There, there's a, been a period of time, and I think we still run into growers who've been burnt by other technology companies. You know, we've seen a lot of companies come and go. Um, Jeff Klein mentioned it at the very beginning, you know, where you have some uh, folks that might come out and they want to sell a system and then disappear. Um, and and that's, that's made it difficult for us to go out and try to have to earn that trust from, from the get-go. And there's really, when we got together as a team and we talked about water management services, we saw this void in the industry where partnerships are formed with a, with a vested interest in the outcome for the grower. It wasn't just about how much software or how much hardware we can sell. And so it makes me so proud 
to watch these relationships um, develop. And, you know, the audience is going to hear from others as well. We're, we're down the road. We're going to have some other growers come in and talk um, and, and so forth. The second thing I would say as a, as a big takeaway from the conversation is there's no silver bullet. You know, with our services, we've, we, you know, as these guys have mentioned, you have satellite data, you have soil moisture, ET forecasting, weather specific, you know, we're looking at crop coefficients for the specific crops. We've got intelligent uh, irrigation scheduling tools, you know, that we've talked about, infiltration widgets, all the stuff that we're talking about. And as Jeff Klein pointed out, you know, every grower looks at all of these parameters a little differently and with a different set of priorities. So if you take Jeff, for example, he's more focused on yield and say less on water savings. Um, he also relies more, as everybody could tell, on uh, soil moisture data and is maybe not as big a user of satellite data, uh, except for maybe doing some troubleshooting um, when trouble, you know, get some trouble spots that pop up in the field. And we have other growers that are on severely limited water supplies. So they're very focused on matching the crop water consumption, you know, using the satellite data, for example. And I think through the partnership, we're able to help the grower focus on those specific goals uh, using the right data and, and tools for them to be successful, um, you know, based on really what they're trying to accomplish. I think that's great, Jeff. Uh, I, I think that uh, um, really allows you and uh, Jane Logic to show uh, just the uh, uh, different ways that um, uh, they're flexible and the different ways they can uh, bring data to growers and be effective. And it's not just a uh, one size fits all, it's, uh, right. it's adaptable to the growing. Right. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we've had a lot of success so far, right? Yeah. And the question I asked you earlier this week, uh, you know, cause we're, we're feeling very good, right? Or, and so, you know, are we celebrating too early? Uh, do we really know the results? You know, that's a, that's a, it's kind of, it's a funny question because if there's, if there's been any celebrating, I, I want to know why I wasn't invited to the party. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think if you ask our team and, and I think you, you know, uh, guys like Jeff uh, would, would agree, you know, they've been working pretty darn hard and they've been, been too busy really to celebrate right now. And I think our mindset is we'll celebrate with the growers, you know, after the harvest. And, and having said that though, I, I will say uh, we're pretty darn excited about how well the program has been received so far and the, and the positive feedback that we've received from the growers. It's, it's, it's really been, um, we're just excited about it. It, it, it motivates the guys, you know, I think, um, Jeff and Steven kind of show the relationship that can be formed here, but I can tell you firsthand, um, you know, Jeff's an easy, pretty easy going guy, as long as everything's going, you know, uh, in the right direction. And he's, He's gotten on Steven. Steven's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's gotten pushed some and, and that's, that's appropriate. That's what we're here for. And I think through that relationship and that partnership, it really does evolve um, from that standpoint. So yes, the early results have been very positive and, and I'm, and I'm hoping, praying they continue through the rest of the season. I can't see any reason why they won't. And uh we will have uh, something big to celebrate at the end of the season, but I, I would say we're going to stay focused for now before we start uh, popping any champagne. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That's a, that's uh, yeah, interesting to hear. So thank you. And yeah, you can definitely tell Jeff Klein's got a lot of energy and uh, you couldn't do his job if you didn't have a lot of energy. So oh, you have to, you <laughs> have to. Yeah. So uh, uh, Jeff Klein, we have a question from one of our viewers today and they're asking, you know, how, how does this partnership work over Zoom, in person, telephone calls? How, how does the communication take place between uh, you and Jane? Uh, in person and uh, telephone. And uh, I would imagine it could be Zoom, but I, I don't ever want to do Zoom. <laughs> we, tried, we tried it right <laughs> one time. You know, I'll go on when I have to. Uh, no, we prefer to talk on the phone or actually meet in person. You know, we're just, we're doing a new field here and we all met uh, a few weeks ago to, to do a distribution uniformity and, 
and uh, and figure out where we wanted to put this stuff. And you know, after that an initial initial need of, of you know bringing out to a new field, then I think most of our conversations take place on the phone unless there's an issue that, that we got to put eyes on it. Yeah. yeah and I, I can, I'll chime in and say, if, if you're going to have a conversation with Jeff, it better be quick. We were, when we were out in the field, <laughs> those cherries, man, he's like, busy. Hey, let's go. We got to keep moving here. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, you, you, Jeff Klein, you mentioned that you did the distribution uniformity test. Uh, were you surprised yeah. by the results? Would it teach you anything? Did you learn anything from that? I or? was. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be much worse than it actually was. Uh, but uh, I, I was very surprised. And now we're uh, now we're online getting some data out of it. So we'll uh, we'll see here, and uh, you know it'll be nice to have uh, have more fields going on this pro platform. Yeah. Well, and thank you, fun. thank you for letting us pick pick some cherries. By the way, uh, we uh, oh, of course, of course, ate those cherries for about a week and a half. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Man, yeah, we sched we scheduled that perfect, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. You guys came at the right time, right time. Yeah. So we've got another question coming in, and uh, so so Jeff Klein, uh, you know, water management services, um, and we were just talking about how busy you are. Uh, how much time do you need to devote on a weekly basis to uh, uh, to interact with Jane, or um, you know, is it, it relatively easy? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about to that. interact with to interact with Jane is is very very minimal. I mean. Uh, Stephen and I now once you know once once we're once we've gotten everything set up, he's sending me emails. We're you know we're texting. We're you know if there's issues, he's sending me emails in regards to what he's seeing as far as next week's scheduling. But once these once these probes are in and the stations are running, you you get you get out of what you put in. If you're watching these if you're watching these pretty frequently. If you're if you're tracking what happens as you're irrigating, if you if you if you look at it frequently enough, you're gonna you're gonna gather more info. Um, the less you use it, I, I do, you know you're, the less info you're gonna get. It's gonna be more of I believe we need to irrigate you know this amount of hours in these sets, and they'll and and, and Stephen will will put together uh, the schedule for the following week. But I like to know more I, I want to know more than what to irrigate or what duration to irrigate and so i'm using the web page uh and the software uh oh shoot probably half hour a day just constantly checking these different stations to see you know what uh, what effects the water is having what effects the heat have is having on these crops but uh you know there there isn't daily communication uh, with, with steven that's great to hear, right? Uh, uh, and uh, to be managing as much water as you are and uh, see it in a relatively short period of time uh, and have it accessible uh, so easily, it's gotta be great. So um, do we yeah. send a report on a regular frequency or uh, <clears throat> how is that set? Yeah, every Friday I get, uh, I get a report of the last week's performance, anything that, that Stephen has noticed that, you know, that, that could be an outlier or changes that we need to make for the upcoming week or uh, upcoming circumstances that we have. You may ask, you know, we got a whole split spray. When are you, you know, when are you planning on going? And I, you know, I give him a general idea of when, what it's looking like. So in turn, he knows what I'm doing out in the field to help me, to help me schedule water accordingly. Yeah, so uh, down the road, or you know, maybe as this has already happened, if you want different reporting or different frequencies of the reporting, um, data frequency differences, can can you get that? I you know, I, yes, I, I I believe so. Yes, in any yeah. in, any variations in reporting, I think can be derived from from the software. Yeah. That's great. That's really great. So, uh, Jeff Tool, we've got another question coming in from for you, and it's um, uh, the viewer wants to know: Is the water management services growing right now? Is this uh, is this uh, getting popular with other growers? Are we growing? Let's see. Right now, 
we're growing, we're helping grow almonds, pistachios, watermelons, <laughs> tomatoes, cherries now, and wine grapes. And if uh, Jeff Klein will let us, we'll be helping uh, grow olives and some walnuts soon as, uh, as well. Um, and we're also growing from the standpoint of, we just brought on uh, Damian Jellen, who has a ton of experience on the farming side, um, as well as using Jane Logic, you know, the past three or four years. Um, you know, on the, on the more serious side, I'll, I'll say we've exceeded our, our original trial goal of the 10 growers um, with a thousand acres by, by quite a bit. And I think we have a, a pretty good chance in the next, you know, month and maybe even double that. So I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly proud of our team's efforts and, and their results really speak, to, uh, speak for themselves. So yes, I think it's, it's pretty safe to say uh, we're, we're growing. And I don't, by the way, I just, that term growing, you know, think about, we are helping grow all these things and we're growing our business while we're helping, you know, our, our growers be successful. So thanks for asking that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you're open for business again. You're taking new accounts. We are, we are, you know, bringing, bringing Damien on. And then once we started wrapping our arms around this and, and got a better understanding for the workload. And uh, we realized we needed to, to bring in some additional resources to help out on that side. Damien's been a, a great addition and he's been able to jump, jump right in. I mean, he was managing um, several hundred acres of, of almonds. Um, and so it's just it's been a natural fit and, it, and it's given us some capacity uh, to, to bring on some new, new acres. And Jeff Tool, just to confirm again, if I uh, sign up for some water management services, do I have to buy a bunch of equipment? No, no, you don't have to buy any equipment at all. We'll we'll put it in uh, as Jeff Jeff Klein mentioned earlier. It's a dollar per acre <clears throat> uh, fee. We kind of assess you know what we need instrumentation wise out there, and um, then we'll provide a, an estimate and a cost for what that'll be on a per acre basis, and then we put the equipment in. We install it. We do the DU test, and uh, we'll we'll take care of that equipment through this uh, through the water management services program. Now we do have a. Well, I do want to point out, Richard. We just had this week. We have a grower that's uh, a, a fairly sizable grower that has their own equipment, and uh, Jane Logics. So they already have Jane Logic. I think they've got uh, 13, 14 systems out there, and and they've heard about it. Um, they heard we hired Damien. And now they're interested in <clears throat> coming on um, with some pretty significant acres using their own equipment. And that was a little bit, we didn't really think about that. Um, so we're working with them to come up with kind of a custom program that uh, would, would help them out. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, they want the extra coaching help and yeah, that makes exactly. sense to me. Exactly. And they, and they realize if they're not getting all the benefits uh, using the software themselves, then why not let an expert, you know, take take that over for you and reduce your time that you have to spend on the software and basically give you those recommendations? And I and I do believe, you know, in this case, the, these guys have had their systems out there for four, five, six years, and it's not that they um, they're looking for a, at it as a I think some labor savings and just a higher level of expertise and something that they can, I guess I'd say, it contract out on the water management side to make their their life a little a little better uh, from that standpoint yeah so we just have time for one last uh question so uh, thanks jeff tool and it's for you jeff klein um if there's a grower out there that's sitting on the fence uh thinking about signing up or using technology in general for what they're doing do you have any advice or uh, comments for them we we'll do it i you, you really you really have nothing to lose um Especially with this program, you don't you don't have the the upfront costs of installing, you know, of paying for all these systems. You're having a service to to help you get going. And anymore in this in in this state, you better be using every last drop of water you have as well as you can. And I think that's going to be a, a huge factor forward. So I, I would say yes, and. It would be it would be hard to do what we do without without software without reading without seeing what's going on underground 
and have a com having a computer reading of it, it, it would make this job even more challenging. Yeah. Yeah, so true, Jeff. Uh, thank you. And uh, Jeff Klein, thanks so much for coming on and, and talking with us oh, today. It is, it is so refreshing. It is so uh, uh, hopeful and exciting to see uh, uh, someone using technology uh, regularly to all of our benefits, because we really do all benefit from that. And uh, we really appreciate your leadership on this. Um, so thank you. And uh, Jeff Duell and Stephen, thank you guys, too. You guys were great today. Uh, I really learned so much from all of you today that uh, uh, I, I really do appreciate what, uh, what you guys taking the time and uh, being uh, generous with your information and your knowledge. So, uh, so thank you. And of course, to our viewers for checking in today, we, we appreciate that. And remember, you can watch all our trainings on the janesusa.com website forward slash trainings. You can find them all there. We're also on uh, wherever you listen to your uh, favorite podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, wherever it is, you can find us there now. So again, thank you, everybody. Uh, stay cool this weekend and uh, keep an eye on that water. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Happy Father's Day, yeah. yeah. Happy, Father's Happy Father's Day, Day everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I, I got to get going. I got to do those reports for Jeff. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you guys. Thanks. All right, sounds good. See ya.